Hi, I'm uh, I'm Ryan Lynn, and uh, you're in the uh, Insploit popping boxes with Nmap Talk. Um, so today, first, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a quick introduction. I'm going to talk a little bit about what Insploit is. Um, talk a little bit about why uh, it's in existence. Um, we're going to go uh, into Nmap and uh, the Nmap scripting engine. Talk a little bit about uh, Metasploit, XML, RPC, and Metrapreter sort of dissect um, the, the code a bit, and we're going to do that through uh, demos and walkthroughs. So there's going to be, you're going to see uh, a lot of the code for this today, and it's really simple, so um, hopefully people will, will find it interesting and uh, be interested in continuing some, some development with that. Um, then we're going to do some questions. So um, first, uh, I'm Ryan Lynn. I'm an information security engineer at SAS Institute. I do basically corporate security. I also am a writer for ethicalhacker.net. Um, I've contributed some code to both Metasploit and Beef. Uh, a lot of the, the code that uh, re is required for me the Metasploit side is now in the 3.3 uh, dev release of, uh, of Metasploit, so you don't have to do any patching of Metasploit for any of this to work. Um, and I just generally enjoy playing with tools and learning about stuff. So um, I'm not any sort of hardcore developer. I just uh, sort of, for a lot of this stuff, said, huh, I wonder if you can do this. And so I just started playing around and, uh, and working on picking it up. Um, so first of all, before we, we get much further, um, I like to sort of tailor it to what, what people are, are interested in. Um, you know, an honest assessment, how many people have done much with, with uh, Nmap with, as far as scanning goes? So it looks like most people are, are familiar with the basics of uh, Nmap. How about Metasploit? Okay, so people are not as comfortable with that, it sounds like. So we'll, we'll go a little bit more into that, and I'll, I'll breeze over some of the Nmap stuff. So um, Nsploit is, is a series of Lua scripts which allow Nmap, which is a... Uh, a port scanner to be able to talk to Metasploit, which is an exploitation framework. Uh, it consists of three basic parts. Uh, there's the library that facilitates all the communication. There's uh, triggers, which uh, when the port scanner detects uh, certain applications on certain ports, the triggers fire and use library calls to help invoke some of this. And then there's the config file, which um, helps direct what uh, sort of options we're looking at for, uh, for execution. Um, and, and all of this uses Nmap's uh, Nmap scripting engine to trigger the Metasploit modules based off of the detected conditions. So as uh, Nmap is running through, each, uh, each trigger has a, a set of conditions for it to fire before uh, anything happens with, with Metasploit. So the, uh, the Nmap scripting engine is critical to this. So. Um, why, I guess, uh, is one of the questions that some people ask me, because there's some other features which are sort of similar within Metasploit to be able to launch uh, in-map scans to begin with. One was curiosity. Um, Metasploit has an XML RPC interface, and I wanted to understand better how it worked. So uh, I just started playing around with it, and then I thought, huh, I wonder if I can make in-map and Metasploit talk together. So this wasn't any sort of... Um, you know, grand scheme or plan. I was just curious if I could do it, so um, I did it. Um, the other thing is, once I started looking at, at tasks like, if you want to run Metasploit against a set of IP addresses, right now you have to build a script to be able to go through and with a command line execute each one. And as you do that, it actually takes a fair amount of time, and you've got to have uh, both the, the command line Metasploit running and a listener running, and so it's kind of a, a pain a little bit. Um, but uh, also, I wanted to make sure that when you're using this, um, you wouldn't just be firing off exploits blindly, that it had the ability to tell whether or not if, for instance, you had a DCOM exploit whether or not DCOM was actually running before you just started throwing stuff into the ether. Um, and also, um, I wanted to make sure that it was simple enough that for the people who are already writing Metasploit exploits, that uh, to build the logic to do these checks would be very trivial, and to do this integration would be trivial. So hopefully as, as new stuff comes out, people can build a quick check-in 
uh, as well and, and make this very easy. Um, and also, like I said, I'm not a hardcore developer. I'm kind of hoping also that I'll get some feedback and people will go, hey, have you thought about doing this? Have you thought about doing this? And come up with some other cool features to add in. So uh, Nmap is, is uh, a network uh, exploration and, and port scanning tool. Um, it is very powerful. It can do OS detection. It can, in many cases, tell you uh, a whole lot about what a service is, uh, is running and exposing. It has a built-in scripting engine called the Nmap scripting engine. It's based on Lua. Um, and uh, Lua has been in a, a number of different things, probably most popular in World of Warcraft. Um, and um, Nmap has been expanding from just doing port scanning to, to doing a lot of other things. Uh, for instance, when, when some of the, the uh, more recent vulnerabilities have come out with Microsoft that have been very widespread, there have been Nmap modules to go in so that you can scan your network and look for vulnerable hosts, um, things like that. So, uh, and, and really, for security folks, most people are pretty familiar with it. So, um, so Lua is a very lightweight embedded language that uh, comes out of uh, Rio de Janeiro. Like I said, it's the primary scripting language uh, for World of Warcraft, so all those cool add-ons for World of Warcraft uh, are all written in Lua. It's embedded into Nmap, it, so uh, you have to have it to compile it in. Uh, for most things like uh, if you run Debian or Ubuntu, when you install Nmap, that's going to come with it. Um, and Nmap contains these libraries to facilitate common tasks, things like uh, if, it want, if you want to uh, know the, the workstation uh, domain or name via SMB, this will query it for you automatically, and I'll show you guys that in a couple minutes. So uh, Metasploit, it seems like most people have at least heard of it, is a framework for creating um, exploits and penetration testing tools. Um, and so we're going to go a little bit more into Metasploit uh, in a couple minutes. But XML RPC is really the glue that puts all of this together. And XML RPC is a protocol for mixing different types of systems that may talk differently. And it's a very, uh, I guess, um, it's a framework for communication between two systems that normally would not be able to talk to each other. Uh, frequently, it's done over HTTP. And we're not really doing it over HTTP for this case, but uh, for a lot of the libraries out there, that is their primary method of communication. Uh, Meterpreter, which we're going to be using um, in a little bit as well, is an advanced payload that Metasploit can use. It's like a little agent that you can put onto a machine that will give you uh, some higher level features uh, in the, in the box that you have compromised. You can do things like dump passwords, uh, do directory listings, and it's come up with some more cool stuff uh, lately. Like, for instance, uh, be able to do a screenshot, um, be able to capture keystrokes, be able to do some sniffing. So it's a really very powerful agent that uh, injects itself as a DLL. And so you have a lot of access to the machine. So what we're talking about today is once an Nmap client scans a target. Um, Nmap is going to get all the information about what's running on the system. All of this information is passed into the Nmap scripting engine, and when it sees uh, that there is a script which meets the conditions for it to fire, so for instance, if you see um, DCOM running, and you have uh, a script that will fire when DCOM is running. It does those checks first. And once it sees that check has happened, then it will go ahead and run that script. And what happens with Nsploit is Nsploit starts off with it finds out that something is vulnerable. Then it goes and uh, there is already going to be a Metasploit listener. Metasploit has an XML RPC module. And it will talk into Metasploit and say, hey, I'd like to log in. From there, Metasploit goes, OK, here's a magic key. And from then on, whenever you talk to Metasploit, you're using that magic key. So we don't have to log in each time. There's a 15-minute timeout. So as long as you're not doing long pauses, um, you're going to keep that same key. Now, Nsploit's aware when bad stuff happens and all of a sudden your key goes away. So it will get you a new key if, if things go sad. So um, from that point, uh, you bit, uh, 
Ansploit builds all of the options that you have set as a combination of your config file and all of the different pieces in the scripting engine itself that you've written as part of your trigger. And it passes all that into Metasploit. And Metasploit will either say, OK, or that was not a valid request. If what you asked for was valid, Metasploit will come back with an OK. And then at that point, it's all in Metasploit's hands. So Metasploit does not say, hey, we successfully compromised the box. There's some tricks to do that, but um, it's sort of complex. And for the most part, when you're scanning, you don't want to have to wait for a whole long time to get back something. So right now, I've left it as just, if it's a valid request, it says OK. From there, pretty much, if, uh, if it is successful, then Metasploit is going to handle that. And I'll show you guys that in, in a couple minutes so that'll be more clear. So that's basically how the communication flows between them. So as far as the architecture goes, um, we're just using the, the base install of Metasploit that you can download from, from their site with the XML RPC module loaded. Uh, Metasploit is very modular, so you have the ability to load in different modules to do different things, and one of those modules is XML RPC. Um, we're going to be listening in this case on a local port, but with this architecture, what's cool is, so say you have three or four people on a pen testing team and they're all scanning different things and all evaluating different things. You can have another person that's dealing with any sort of shells that have been acquired or um, any other feedback that you've gotten depending on whatever your payload is by uh, setting your, your target uh, Metasploit server as a different host. So I can have a whole bunch of scanners out here all talking back to a back-end Metasploit server, which is actually coordinating the attacks and handling your shells. So that's, that's one of the, the cool things about this. Um, so then we have all of the, the nmap uh, and nmap scripting engine libraries and uh, triggers that we talked about earlier. So for the Insploit library, it, it facilitates a lot of the, the creation. The XML RPC stuff is kind of ugly, so um, I tried to make sure that nobody ever had to look at that. So there's a whole bunch of higher level functions which will do things like launch exploit um, so that you don't have to deal with uh, all of the pieces like, okay, now I will log in, now I'll do this. So pretty much all you have to do is, is pass it some options and it will handle all of the XML RPC communication in the back end. And it'll either return, yep, you know, that was valid or nope, that was not valid. So I also wanted to make sure that I abstracted as much as possible so people could use as little code as possible to do what they needed to do. The triggers uh, themselves are just little teeny scripts. They, like I said, they contain two, two pieces of logic. One is, should I run? And the other is, when I run, what should I do? And we're going to actually pull up some of these scripts and look at, at the internals of them because, um, like I said, they're, they're really easy to write. And at first, I was a little intimidated, but once I broke out um, all of the pieces, it turns out it, it's not that hard. Um, so and these, these triggers are called based off of, you can either do ports, uh, if, if a port's open. Uh, it, if you uh, tell MMAP to do service detection, then uh, if you see a specific service running, so even if you see, like, HTTP running on port, you know, 5959 or something like that. Uh, if you're doing service detection, it will still run. Um, and you can add in advanced detection logic. So uh, in some of these, I said only fire if you're running Windows XP or Windows 2000. So if you see, you know, port 5959 running on a Linux box, obviously our Windows exploits are probably not going to be successful. So we're just not going to bother. Um, so, you know, it, uh, it really does act on whatever information it finds out from within the script as well as whatever information MMAP is providing to the script. So the Insploit config file contains all of the basic pieces about what you want to be doing. Um, instead of doing it on a per-trigger basis, that's where you include pieces of information like uh, what module you want to run. So if you are specifically trying to get back shells versus trying to get back metropolitan shells versus just wanting to run a script on each one of these hosts. So say you want to, to profile, you're, uh, you're an internal systems person and you want to profile 
all of the boxes that have these vulnerabilities. You know, you may have information on the box about who's the owner of the machine, um, what OS, what, what patch level. Is this thing actually set to be doing auto updates? You know, maybe some basic diagnostics about what happened that's wrong here. You know, you can do that, that and put it all into a, um, an interpreter script and have that run automatically upon uh, connection. And uh, the config file is also in XML just to, to keep things uh, standard. So it's, it's not a hard format to, to put together. Um, and so you put the same options that you would put into Metasploit in this file and, uh, and things just magically happen. So um, now I'm gonna sort of walk through a lot of this stuff. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick demo of just what it is. You can see what we're talking about. Um, then I'm gonna look at the code layout a little bit. Uh, we're gonna look in depth at uh, some trigger modules, uh, the config file, and then as time permits, we're gonna look some more into uh, the features. And also, um, please feel free to ask questions. Um, I've uh, done this talk one other time and uh, you know, there were some, some good questions that came out of that so I've been tried to incorporate them. But if, if people have questions, I really encourage, uh, encourage everybody to, to speak up and ask. So the operating system that I'm using is the uh, Samurai Web Testing Framework. Um, I'm doing um, another presentation later in. I spent a lot of time doing web pen testing um, and so for the, the web stuff, the Samurai distribution is pretty good. Um, and I've installed the latest version of Nmap into this, into user local. And so it's, uh, it's Ubuntu based, so it's very easy to, to update and install new packages. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, start up my, my Metasploit listener. And um, come into here and MSF console is, uh, is the command line uh, console for Metasploit. I typically work in, in this because I find it to be a lot smoother than um, the GUI, and the GUI would work as well. Um, the XML RPC module uh, is what's required for communication. So I'm going to load XML RPC, and we have to specify a password um, because there is some basic uh, attempt at security for this. Um, so we're going to specify our password as the Uber ABC123. So from here, we can look at our MMAP. We see we're running uh, the version 5.0, which is downloadable off NMAP's website. And so I look at my IP address. It's 192.168.1.235. So I'm going to just double check. There's my username, password, port's right, and my IP address is right. So next I'm going to locate a specific script that I'd like to run. And I, um, I'm going to be running this against a Windows XP Service Pack 0 box. So I'm going to just use DCOM because it seems to work more frequently. Um, and since I'm doing live demos, I would really like it to work today. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is, as root, and the reason that um, being root is important is because for the type of scan that we're going to do, we're going to do OS detection. And in order to do OS detection, you either need to be root or nmap has to be SUID um, so that it runs with root privileges. So I'm going to just go ahead and shortcut this and we're going to be root. So I'm going to do an nmap and I'm going to do a dash A scan and the dash A does an operating system identification. It does a, a send scan and in addition it also does service probes to look for what services are located on each port that it finds open. I'm also going to specify my script and I'm going to say my script equals ms03026 dcom and then I'm going to specify my IP address which is 192.168.1.236 I think. So from here I run the script and it's going to take just a minute as it goes through the port scan and uh, again because we're, we're doing a little bit more in-depth scan 
this, this does take just a second because we are looking for OS and we are looking for some additional information so that our triggers can be as specific as possible. So we'll wait for a second for this to finish. So from, from here we see a couple of, of different things. We see that NetBIOS was here. We see that the script that we run, the exploit was successfully sent. And uh, again, I don't say that it was successful because all that, NMAP, or all that Metasploit gives us as far as that communication is that, yep, that was received clearly. Um, and here you can see some of the other scripts that ran. Uh, so the SMB OS discovery has identified this as a Windows XP box. Um, and the OS scan that was part of the dash A has identified this as a Windows 2000 SP0123 or, or a Windows XP box. So coming over to Metasploit, we can see that we haven't typed anything in here and we now have a session successfully open with Meterpreter. So this is open in the background, so we are not directly in the session yet. Um, and so uh, I'm going to go through a couple quick things to see uh, for instance, if you have a couple of different exploits that ran against a the box, there's a couple of ways to see how your shell succeeded. Um, so we're going to do a sessions-l-v, and this is going to say list all the sessions that I have open and give me the verbose information. And so what I see here is that I have a interpreter session open. This is my uh, host. It's listening on port 4444. I have it uh, connected to the uh, .236 host that I exploited, and it was successful using the MS03026 DCOM. So, you know, from here we can do a sessions dash i and do one, and so we're now in the interpreter session from that Windows box that we just exploited. So we can get UID, and we can see that we're in as NT Authority System, which is really nice. Um, and so from, from here, uh, if you type in help, um, Interpreter has a whole lot of options. How many people here have used Interpreter before? Okay, so it seems like a couple people, or a, there's just a whole lot of shy people here, um, which is, is probably partially the case too. But Interpreter has um, a great help system. It will list all of the commands and what they do. So if you're looking for something specific, um, all of uh, the core commands are, are basically involve starting and stopping Meterpreter. Um, all the STD API calls involve uh, interacting with the operating system. So here we can do an LS and we can view all the files that are here. We can um, navigate around the file system. Um, we can upload files, download files. Um, and, and there's a couple, you know, uh, cool things here that you can do that you wouldn't be able to do from a normal shell. One of them is hash dump. The priv module will allow you to actually dump the password hashes in uh, the PW dump format that programs like can enable use. And I uh, believe that, um, that uh, programs like John the Ripper will also understand this. So if you're a pen tester and you've managed to get in through uh, a, a method and you've loaded up the interpreter payload, then this will allow you to go ahead and pull the hashes down so that you can start cracking those to be able to use for, for further penetration. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So the next thing I'd like to do is look at how all of this is, is laid out. So uh, for me, I have my stuff uh, installed in user local. So I'm going to go to user, local, and then all the nmap script stuff is stored under share. So if uh, you are on uh, the standard install where nmap is installed in like user bin, or then your stuff would be in user share. So from here we go to user, local, share, nmap, and we see some, some fun stuff in here. The, the two big ones are the NSE lib and the scripts directory. So um, in, in this uh, directory is where NMAP keeps all of this information about how to identify services, um, you know, uh, what RPC protocols are which, um, the, the general probes that it sends out to figure out what's running on a port, all that's in here. So if you're ever just curious and want to look around, um, not a bad place to go to look. So the NSE lib has all of the libraries 
that uh, we can use. And this list is pretty short, but if you're interested in developing your own scripts, coming into here and just looking at what people have already written is, uh, is a good idea because there's a whole lot of, of uh, functions that are already out there. So if you're looking at doing analysis on a web server, there's already all the HTTP protocol stuff already written in Lua or POP or SNMP, um, all sorts of that stuff. So for, for here, we have our, our exploit Lua here, which, uh, which has all of our core functions from, from there. So if you're interested in writing some stuff for exploit, here's where you would go to reference, you know, is there a function that, that looks at this? Is there a function that looks at that? This is where you would go for that. But for the most part, you just need to be in the scripts directory which is where all of the in-map scripting engine stuff lives for the triggers that you'll be running. And so uh, for me, I've gone ahead and named mine the same things that the different vulnerabilities have, have been named. So for me right now, all the stuff that I've done starts with, uh, with MS. So we can see that there's a couple here. There's the DCOM, there's LSAS, there's NetAPI, and there's another one that is, is separate that's the msqlinfo. Uh, uh, NSE, and that's uh, that's come stock with uh, with Nmap. So we're going to look at uh, at the first one, which is the one that we just did. And so um, basically, all the the stuff up top is just telling uh, Nmap what the name of the script is. Nmap keeps a database of all of the scripts, so that uh, it knows what it needs to look at when different things are run. The category I have labeled as exploit. There's a whole bunch of different categories. Um, and uh, the closest one to this is intrusive, but I felt that maybe this was a little bit more severe than intrusive. Uh, the scans range, uh, range from anywhere to um, benign to, uh, well, we can look at some of the categories. So, you know, safe, you know, default, checking for malware, um, you know, again, intrusive and discovery. So this is, like I said, I felt like it was a little bit uh, more severe than uh, intrusive. So I went ahead and created my own called exploit. We're requiring two different libraries. We're requiring the exploit library and the standard uh, in-map scripting engine library, which will give us all of the, the pieces that we need to be able to talk to nmap to find out what all information was just passed to us. So the first thing we need is we need a port rule. And the port rule says, when does this fire? When do I need to run this trigger? And for here, we're looking at, at two things. First thing we did is we set our NetBIOS port. And we said, OK, for port 139 on TCP, then that is going to be our NetBIOS port. And so we also want to make sure that it's open and not in some other stage. Um, so for instance, if somebody has it firewalled off, then obviously we don't want to run. So we want to make sure that it's actually open. So Nmap has uh, the get port state, which will, for our host and our port, give us back the state of NetBIOS. So we're just saying that if, if uh, NetBIOS is running and it's open and the service that it's on is NetBIOS SSN, then next we're going to, to check to find out what OS it's running. And so this is only going to work for Windows XP Service Pack 0 and 1. So there was no thing uh, within Nmap to say, hey, is the OS one of these things? So I wrote my own called host match, which basically you can do a, a regular expression for whatever you need the host to be, and it will return true or false. So if this needs to run, then it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. And from there, this gets really easy. So this is all of the stuff down here to actually do the exploit itself. So if the port rule is true, then it will come down and execute the action. And so for the action, uh, we basically open up a, uh, a new MSF init, which will go ahead and cause it to log in, get the key, and do all of the basic setup for this. It also reads in the config file and caches some stuff. And it returns back the socket that it's talking to Nmap, to uh, Metasploit over. And from there, we just say, you know, exploit whatever the name of the exploit is, um, we, our type of operating system is Windows, and the, the Windows is going to be what section it references in the config file, and then we're passing in the host IP. 
So if there's any other pieces, I'll show you guys uh, another one of these that has some additional pieces that need to be set. Um, this is all the pieces that have to be set for this to run. So it's, it's very simple. If you needed something like uh, a target or, or something along those lines, you could set that in here as well based off uh, the, the OS. So we'll look at one that's um, a little bit more involved. So for here we have two host matches, but it's still pretty simple. Um, and one of the things we had to set here is we uh, needed to make sure that the, the target was set to zero in order to be able to do an auto detect. So anything in the ops is a, uh, it's an array of different values that you need to pass into Metasploit. So I'll show you guys how you would look at this by hand in Metasploit in just a second so you can see where these options come from for people who aren't as familiar with Metasploit. So for, for the MSO3 we just looked at, within Metasploit, you would use exploit, uh, Windows, DC, RPC, MSO3, O26, DCOM. And so if you look at the DCOM, that is the exact thing that we have here. So uh, the payload that we used was um, the Windows Interpreter uh, reverse TCP. And so we have now set our payload to that. And when we look at our options, these are the different options that we have set. So anything that has a required is something that we're going to have to set if we want it to be overridden. So for our host, which is the host that we're attacking, uh, Insploit is going to take care of writing that for you. But for LHost, you're going to have to set that in your config file. So let's look at the config file real quick. The config file is kept in your home directory under .insploit. And so for this, the, the basic uh, item is, is currently um, named MSF Bridge, and I'm probably going to change that in the future because um, it's the, the bridge between the Metasploit framework and Nmap. We have the basic stuff, our username, password, and port. And then here, if you look, we have our payload, which is the same payload that we picked before in Metasploit, and our L host. So those are the only pieces that we have to have set for this to work. And so at that point, in Metasploit, we would just run an exploit, and in Insploit, it takes care of that step for you. So uh, if you're looking at something that uh, is more complex, like you want to, to look at a number of different hosts, we're going to... I'm going to do a video of that since I didn't want to carry around a lot of different laptops today. Um, we'll look at the, the multi-host version. Um, so again, we're just loading up Metasploit uh, and, and loading up our XML RPC module again. And uh, from, from here, we're going to go into uh, Nmap and we're going to set up our scan. So what we've done here is instead of doing a dash A, because I don't really care for the most part what is running on each of the, the individual things that we're looking at, um, I'm trying to make this a little bit quicker. We're going to just do an operating system scan. We're going to do a SIN scan. Dash O is operating system identification. Dash SS is a SIN scan. We're going to run all the scripts which have a, a class of exploit and uh, so like I said, we're, we're just looking at all of those for category equals exploit that we did before. And I've listed a couple of my IP addresses. So what it's doing now is there's not going to be a lot of feedback at this point. Um, if you want feedback, um, later versions of Nmap, basically if you hit the space bar, it'll tell you what it's up to. So it'll tell you whether or not it is currently port scanning. It'll tell you whether or not it's, uh, it's in script scan. And it will give you a rough estimate of how much time that you have left. Uh, sometimes it's rough and sometimes it's very rough for the time that it has left. Um, so uh, you, you at least have an idea of whether you're talking about hours or minutes. But if you're like going three, two, one, you're going to be really disappointed. So from here we can see that for this bottom one, uh, we had two exploits that it found, that, or two vulnerabilities that it found that it was able to send exploits for, for this bottom host. 
for this host, it had three. So for the first one, because it did not match based off operating system, it didn't even bother. Um, so because this one's Windows XP, all three of these vulnerabilities were, um, were uh, referenced, so it went with that. So then we go back to our Metasploit, and we can see that we have all the sessions opened from the NMAP run. When you type in jobs, it lists anything that's still active. So while this is going on, if you're interested in seeing what Metasploit is doing, you can type in jobs at any time, and it'll show you. Looking at the uh, sessions-lv, we can see here for the different hosts that uh, for the .109, which is the one that had three vulnerabilities, we have the three shells showing what each one was successful with. And for the 115, which only had two, we can see both of those and what they were vulnerable to. So you'll be able to actually look and see uh, as these shells pop up what you were definitely vulnerable to. So this isn't just a, um, a scanner will tell you, yes, it looks like this is vulnerable, but this will give you for sure um, these are actionable items. So looking at what's passed actually between these, I captured some of the, the uh, XML RPC traffic. So you can see that what is in, what you see in uh, Metasploit is actually what is being passed by Insploit. So you can see all of the, the same basic stuff. You have your L host, you have um, the exploit, the, the name of the exploit that it ran, and all of the different values that, uh, that you would normally have as part of uh, the exploit and, and Metasploit. So pretty much anything that you can set as an option within the Metasploit payload, you can set within your config file and it will pass over. Um, and uh, so from, no, okay. So from here, we're gonna look at what um, the actual response looks like. Um, and like I said, it doesn't tell you whether or not um, the exploit was successful. All it comes back with was a success. So yes, your syntax was valid. And so that's all that you're going to get back as part of this. So um, for people who haven't played with Metrepreter at all, um, I'd like to, to do a quick demo. Um, we're gonna look at what a Metrepreter script looks like. Um, so in Metasploit, if you look in scripts under Metrepreter, there's going to be a whole bunch of different things here. And some of these things are very awesome. So if you're not familiar with how Metrepreter scripts work, you should really check out what's in here. Um, there's a, a couple of things. For instance, um, the, uh, let's see here, sorry, I apologize. The win enum will go through and basically completely profile a whole system. So what we're going to look at is we are going to um, look at the screenshot uh, module that I wrote. So this is uh, in no way any sort of uh, exploit interpreter skills, but um, one of the things that we want to do first is we're going to just print out that the script is running so that we have some feedback. We're going to create a directory under the, the logs directory. So all of the Metasploit stuff is kept within a log file, a uh, log directory under your home directory called MSF3. If you've never looked in here, there's the logs directory which has all your logs, the mod cache which has a cache of all the modules, and uh, in the plugins directory. So when we look in logs, we can see the framework log which if while you're debugging this, if anything weird happens within Metasploit itself over the XML RPC connection, it will be logged into this framework.log. So you can see here when um, Metasploit loads up, um, there is some debugging information which is written out. So one of the things that we can see is our Windows Metropolitan Reverse TCP was successfully encoded. So that's part of the, the log output from, from when we ran earlier. Um, also in here uh, is the screenshot directory that I just mentioned. And so each one of these directories is from a, a run of that screenshot. So from here, once we have our screenshot directory created, uh, logs, this uh, line right here builds that path. And so we just say the config directory from Metasploit uh, slash logs slash screenshot. 
and then we name these host plus uh, the timestamp. And this will create the directory. So the thing about the screenshot uh, module is that you have to be in a program which will allow you access to the desktop, such as explorer.exe. And so we're going to try to migrate to explorer.exe so that Metropeter will inject itself uh, upon connection into Explorer. And then we're going to use the uh, SBIA module, which uh, was what allows us to do screenshots. So basically from here, we say we're going to try to find an explorer.exe. If one exists, then we're going to attempt to migrate to that. And so migrating to the new process is just a matter of doing that uh, function right there. And all of this is, is uh, documented in a lot of the other scripts. So a lot of this I just pulled out of others. Um, in addition, under the lib directory of, of Metasploit, you can find all of these functions. Um, and so then we dump a screenshot. But more importantly, if we look under advanced, if you do a show advanced, one of the things from Meterpreter is this auto run script. So we're going to take this and we're going to come back to our config file. And so we're going to come back here and we're going to set up our auto run script. And we'll save this. And we'll come back to our Windows box. And we'll log back in here real quick. <coughs> and so from here, we'll put up something that will be interesting enough for us to take a screenshot of. Maybe. <laughs> So we'll just open up um, Notepad or something like that and do, yay, it worked. So we'll go back to here. And when we go back to the original nmap job that we ran, which is that original DCOM, Make sure that all those sessions were closed. And so we're going to run this again. And so from, from here, you're going to see um, something a little bit different. You're not actually going to get a lot of feedback that the script ran. It is going to, uh, once uh, Insploit has taken it and handed it off to Metasploit, you'll still get the feedback that everything was done successfully, but it'll take a little bit longer for your shell to come back up in, um, in Metasploit. So we can see here that the exploit was successfully sent. We already have our session open here, but we should be able to look in our screenshots directory So under our uh, MSF3, should be able to look under our logs and our screenshots. And um, well, that apparently didn't work correctly. But so anyway, you'll see, um, oh, yay, it worked. My dates are just off. Um, so uh, you'll be able to see the screenshot was taken automatically. So if you want to, to do certain things as you log into each box as you're doing this for, say, a pen test or something else, all of, all of that will, will happen. So um, I think that that is uh, the bulk of, of what I wanted to show you guys. Um, let's go back to the slides real quick. So uh, all the, the code can be found at happypacket.net. Um, my blog is blog.happypacket.net, and you can find me on Twitter there. Does anybody have any questions? 
comments? See how far off I am on time. Okay, so um, I think I have a, a bit more time. So one of the things, um, one of the the other things that that you can do uh, as far as this is, if you want to find out how any of the other pieces uh, work, we can go into our share directory back into nmap and look at um, our exploit stuff. So uh, if you're looking at building your own scripts and you want to profile the functions, just grepping function will give you a good idea of what you need. So if you're looking for something specific in here, just grepping out the function will will give you all the pieces you need to be able to, to write this stuff. So for the most part, when we look at what we, we used, uh, we used the MSF init, which uh, helped us build our initial connection. Um, and the, the other stuff that we used was the actual exploit functions, which was under exploit. So a lot of these are, are used internally, but these can be called directly from from within your scripts as well. So, for instance, if you're interested in um, writing something of, of this for your own, so if we look back in Insploit, we can look at the gen login. And so, one of the, the things that we're doing as part of this to speed stuff up is when the config file is read in, we're storing a lot of it. Nmap has its own built in registry where we can store things that persist between scripts. So, from, from here, we can store. Uh, I created a new node called config under Insploit that would allow us to store all of the basic stuff that we'll use uh, each time we have to reconnect. So if you're scanning hosts and say, right now I hit one and in 15 minutes I hit another, your key is going to have expired, so you're going to have to reconnect again. So from, from here, this will allow us to have access to all of that stuff. So a lot of the, the pieces like the OS search and stuff like that uh, the nmap registry is very important because the nmap registry is ha how nmap passes all of the information about what it just scanned into the uh, NSC scripts that you're working with. So um, from, from there, you have access to stuff like the OS and all of that. So um, sorry. Let's see here. So for host match. What we're actually basing that off of is uh, the, uh, so it looks for the OS which was passed in. Through, let's see here. Through here, which the host.os, this is actually part of the registry, the host option is one of the things that's passed to this function, and all that host information is kept in the nmap registry so that you can access it. Um, and on the nmap's website, you, there is a reference for all of the different pieces of information that's kept in the registry. Part of that information is only set based off certain types of scans. So for instance, if you are not doing an operating system scan or a, a dash O or a dash A, the operating system information won't be sent. So um, I sort of played it safe with these and said, so if we don't know what type of operating system we're using, then sending it trash is probably not a good idea. So most of these won't fire unless you've at least done a dash O in order to do operating system detection. Um, but looking back at our actual um, library, so all of the, the pieces about building this stuff up you can look at uh, the various pieces that are pulled in from the other libraries here. And I actually used some of the other stuff here. I'm using um, the uh, LXP module within, uh, within Lua, which does not come standard with NMAP. So it's something that you'll have to do an apt get on. Um, and it's the, the lib uh, XML for Lua under Debian. And I'm using this to allow me to parse the, the XML pieces. So that is one of the, the pieces of this that uh, 
you might have to install if it's not installed already. But from there, again, looking at the registry from here, um, just pulling the config pieces and, and all of that. So I think that that's probably all that I have for right now. If anybody has specific questions, I hope they'll come back and ask. Uh, the, the part about libxml? So um, there is no XML parser within nmap. So uh, what I ended up having to do was I didn't want to write one in Lua. Um, learning Lua was an interesting experience. Um, it didn't behave exactly like a lot of the other programming languages that I was used to. So um, I ended up using, there was a lib XML for Lua uh, that you can get through Debian. Um, and so I, I'm actually using that as part of, as part of this. And there's basically uh, the, the LOM part, part of um, the uh, libxml, um, or sorry, uh, it's libxml and libxpat. Um, the, the LOM part of that is uh, allowing us to just easily reference some of the XML pieces. So um, let me find some of the XML stuff here. Uh, the XML was kind of challenging to deal with since there wasn't um, anything here. So when we're looking at, um, let's see which function this is. This is the actual connect, which will allow us to get all of the different pieces. Um, for here, we're just doing uh, a connect to the port. Um, and uh, as, as part of this, um, we, once we send our stuff, the uh, LXP LOM.parse will give us back our XML and a data structure. So from here, I'm passing all of that to another function called parse response, which goes through. And this was the part that was sort of a pain as mapping all of this out coming through and figuring out what is where to be able to, to reference those specific values. So um, this, this is not as transparent as a, lot of, uh, as a lot of the other pieces, but I'm using the libxpat uh, and libxml and mom for, for this so that uh, you, know, you don't have a very complex, I couldn't find any good Lua-based uh, XML parsing stuff. Anybody else? Cool. Well, thank you very much.